Hey, hey, welcome to the electronic shop, guys. Uh, I do a little bit of electronic work. That was my career for most of my life. And what I want to show you is something for the go-kart. Now, all I bought for the go-kart was tractor-trailer running lights. And, let me have this back up here. Then they're LED. Now the thing about LEDs are they're pretty, pretty, um, I'll set this for 13 volts. They're pretty stable as far as the voltage to them. You know, they stay bright, bright, and then they kind of go out. So I'm, this is the running lights. They're really, really, really bright. They only draw a tiny amount of power. So but I was thinking it would be really cool if I added a brake light. Well, let me show you my little spearmint here. I did some calculations. I measured the uh, apparent, I used some math here, Ohm's Law. At 10 volts, I was measuring with my meter in series with the power here. You know, you just hook up the leads in series with power coming out of the power supply and read your, your uh, current going through it. Only read 41 milliamps. So I did a cal re reverse calculation and that came out to oh, I forget what it was. 100, 100, 100 ohms approximately. So I f ended up finding some 150 ohm resistors. Now you see the brightness that this is at at 12 volts. It looks pretty bright, right? You wouldn't know the difference. Well, all I need to do is bypass this resistor with another wire, which would come from the brake switch. And now, I got brake lights. And those will stay on until the voltage of the battery gets way down. That's like 6 or 7 volts. And it will still work as brake lights as my battery power goes up and down. So... I think that's pretty cool. How about you guys? And I think I might leave these run all the time, my, my rear lights. Because um, if you're running around in the daytime and somebody's following you down a trailer and you're burning along and all of a sudden you nail the brakes, bingo! The guy gets some warning. If the lights are just on solid all the time, they'd never know. So I've decided what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a third wire and put the resistor so it's out of harm's way right inside the circuit and I can do that by just bringing the lead in from the bottom and attaching it like so to that same pad and burying this in the back in series with those wires so I, they won't be, uh, you know, exposed to the elements or anything like that there. And let me check this for resistance to the... Okay, ground is isolated. So what I could do is I could just run a small wire from this terminal, throw the screw in here, and then that screw would become the ground and I wouldn't need to run a separate wire. Then I can use these gray and, and red wires as my two lines. I think that's what I'm going to do. I got my, my uh, soldering iron fired up. I'm going to put a smaller wire on that. I'm going to reuse the gray as my uh, bypass. All right. And I'm going to run a much smaller wire to a terminal here if I can find it. And then just attach a terminal underneath the screw. 
like so. One of these. And when I screw this to the chassis of the, the go-kart, it'll just ground itself. All right, all right. Hope that works like a plan. We'll see. I'm going to make sure it's the wire nearest the outlet for the hot wires. So everybody did obeying their Lord and Master and staying inside and doing all that crap they're supposed to be doing. I guess. Well, there it is. What the hell? Why is that so tight? I guess I'm going to use the other one. I am surrounded by incompetence. Considering my own. There we go. Are you bored yet? Okay, I'm going to run a black wire because in, in DC electric, black wires are typically your, your ground wires. Eh, it's just a little fun project. I don't really need to be doing this, but let me see here. Find me a place of wire. If I can find a place of wire. Maybe it'll be something other than black. speaker wire. There's a red one. There's a little piece of paper. All right, here we go. As I said, this takes milliamps, so it will not be any issue of uh, putting too much power through these little lights or anything. Okay. I'm going to tin up this wire a little bit. Tinning is when you pre-solder them. As I said, this was my career for most of my life, so I know a little bit about what I'm doing. Straight up in there. And we'll slobber him down. There's our ground. I'm just going to loop him back. And I'll cut him off. Son of a gun. It ain't the right crimper, but it's a crimper. And that'll be perfect. Alright. Now, my 150 ohm resistor. which I just need, as I said, to tie it right to the same spot as the hot wire, because we're just going to bypass it with the other part of the circuit. And why don't I tin this guy a little bit, because he's corroded. It's 
So way off of the flux in the wire in the solder to That's an aluminum board, so I don't fear that that's going to be a problem. Actually, I should pull it out this way. And then I'll snip this close, and I'll solder this close, and then I'll put just a little tiny piece of heat shrink on just that junction. Find my cutters. There we go. Solder these together. As I said, I wanted the That's my ground point when I screw it to the chassis. And uh, if I had the right tools, I this will be all right. feed. Our circuit wires. Back out through there, as they would say in Canada. And everything is copacetic, right? I'm going for it. I'm saying we're good, so I'm going to screw her back together here. When I put them in there, I'll just put a little washer on them. Make sure they make contact with the... I, I checked the continuity between the moving parts of the chassis and the and the rest of the frame on the go-kart, and it's zero ohms, which is good for all of us. Okay, shall we try it before we snap the lid on? Nah. One closest to the wires, remember I said was the the ground. So I've got a black wire here. That'll be our, our circuit ground. And we know the gray wire is our brake light. So I'm gonna hook up, turn on the voltage. That's at 13 volts still. So, actually, the running lights go through the gray thing. So the gray running lights will be the, the gray wire. Duh. Don't screw that up. I put the resistor in the gray wire. So we should have running lights. Now here's the hot, 
the other hot wire I'm going to just touch it directly to the 12 volts. Now I've now converted this running light into a brake light. Now you got to remember that uh, not every one of these is going to be exactly the same. That's why I hooked it up to 10 volts. I measured the 10 volts with my meter and then I measured the current. I did a little math and I came up with the resistance value that I needed. Oh, yeah, the resistance value came out to 243 at uh, 41 milliamps inverted into 10 volts. So you divide 4 into 210 and you get 243. So 243 ohms, well, I figured, well, I wanted about a third of that. So I said, how about 120? And I put 120 in here and it was still pretty bright. So I just reduced it a little bit more. And so that gave me a ballpark, but sometimes just doing an experiment with diff different values uh, is what you need to do. All right, well, that's our little science lesson for today. I have got another project I'm going to do um, that's going to need a lot of investigation. This is an antique 1966 sine wave signal generator that will generate up to about a hundred kilohertz sine wave which is perfect for audio testing and it also will put out a square wave well it doesn't I checked it, it does put out something but it's just a distorted nasty looking uh, waveform so this thing has a lot of electrolytic cap capacitors in it they're known to go bad over time uh, there's transistors in it that could have blown it was working at one time when I used it, so it's aged. It hasn't been something that I blew up. I think it just aged and uh, failed. So this is just our little electronics for today. And uh, I did this with my motorcycle. See, I had some experience with this. I didn't have LED lights, but I had regular incandescent bulbs in my motorcycle. And I ended up putting like, I don't know what they were, about 500 ohm resistors in series with my orange tail lights in the back and the front so they were on all the time but when the turn signals come on the fronts got brighter the backs got brighter and when I hit the brake light the backs came on bright along with the tail light because I figured I'm riding my motorcycle at night I've got one tail light bulb running light if that blows out at least my little orange lights will show up and then they got bright for brake lights too so uh, I still have that circuit board around if anybody's interested. Uh, it's all totally embedded in, in uh, silicone both sides so you can mount it in your motorcycle. But uh, I think I can remember how to hook it up. All right, guys. God bless. Take care. We'll see you next Just time. a quick one here. I uh, modified another one of these already and finished it. But... Uh, I'll show you the test again, just so you know, all right, all right, all right, there's the ground, there's the gray, the gray is the running lights, which has the series resistor with it, okay, so it's slightly reduced, now doesn't that, that looks really bright to me, so, and when you hit the brakes, bingo, 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 That'll work great. Alright, that's all I wanted to show you. I got two done, ready to go on the cart. I don't know if I'll go out and do it tonight. Maybe I will. Uh, I got the headlights too. I got the switches. I uh, just need to mount a little plate, cut a little plate, and cut, drill some holes so I can weld it. I was thinking about taking the whole guts out of the, uh, the starter thing on the on the Predator engine and just putting that in my little panel too. So we'll see. <laughs>